Hello friends, this is Zots, my PR team will have a statement soon, and today we're going to talk about the big developer update that just dropped. It announces a pretty significant set of features that are really going to change the game when or if they are implemented. Now, funnily enough, these features are not coming in the next update, we're just going to test them in the PTB, and they might be added to the game in the future. So, what I'm going to talk about today, we might see in weeks or months, we don't really know. What we know though is what this update is all about, and in summary, it can all fit in this picture. There's two new features basically. Number one is that survivors can now pick themselves up from the ground automatically without any perk, uh, which they couldn't do before without help. And number two is that if there's no survivor standing, if all the survivors are down, escaped, or dead, or hooked, then the game will automatically end without the killer needing to pick them all up and hook them. Um, to finish the game. They will trigger a finisher Mori and you'll see a Mori of the killer killing the last survivor that was standing and then the game will be over, everyone will be sacrificed. Wow. All right, let's get into it. So, uh, how did it used to work up until now? Very simple, when a survivor is on the ground, they can be healed by another survivor and that's fine, or they can recover. Unfortunately, without certain perks, you can only recover to 95%, and it takes 32 seconds to recover uh, to that point, uh, a little bit less to get to 95%, and if at that point you don't have perks like No Mither, Boon Exponential, Unbreakable, or Sorgar, you cannot pick yourself up without help. Well, that's, that's gone. Now you can pick yourself up. The action of recovering will take a little bit longer, 45 seconds, but once that 45 seconds happened, you can just pick yourself up unlimited amount of times, no matter how many times you've been down before. You don't need help from your teammates. Now, there are some perks that influence this. No Mither, for example, is one of them. I didn't consider it because no one runs it. But what about the other perks? Well, without any perks, you take 45 seconds. With Knockout, which affects the 15 first seconds, it takes 50 seconds. So it's a little bit longer, but not too bad. With Exponential, it takes 30 seconds, which is pretty damn good. And with Unbreakable, here's the crazy part, it only takes 22 seconds. Unbreakable has been buffed from 35 faster to 100% faster, which in my opinion is a little bit troublesome. We'll get into why later. Uh, also, if you stack Unbreakable and Exponential, it only takes 18 seconds to pick yourself up from the ground without any help as many times as you want, as long as the conditions are met. Um, this does have some positives. Uh, for once, you you will never be able to be left on the ground for four minutes. Um, that, that's happened to me a few times and it's not very fun. So hey, that's kind of nice. But even more interesting is the next bit. Um, survivors are considered standing if they are not dead, escaped, on the hook, or dying. As long as there's multiple survivors, the game is fine. But when the game detects that there's only one survivor left, only one survivor that is on their feet, then the last survivor standing phase of the game begins. The killer and the survivor both get a higher field of view. It's like they get Shadowborn, from what we understand. And at that point, it's a bit of a race. If the killer manages to down the last survivor and then no one else is standing, then every survivor left in the game will automatically die and that survivor gets moored in a fancy animation. If, however, the killer takes too long, then the other survivors that are on the ground clearly can now pick themselves up by themselves. So as I said, it's a bit of a race against time. Moris have been reworked and they no longer allow you to Mori. Devour Hope and Rancor, the perks have been reworked. They no longer allow you to Mori. And obviously this does mean that it is perfectly possible for a game to end at five, uh, five gens with no hooks. If your entire team goes down <laughs> very, very quickly, the game ends on the spot. And it's also a little bit harder now to give the last survivor hatch. Unless the last survivor hides and everyone else dies, uh, you can no longer choose to give the survivor the hatch or bring them to the gate to be kind of nice. You cannot do that because the game automatically ends if you down all the survivors. So that's a bit of a bummer, but that's how it works right now. Most games, I imagine, will end with the last two or three survivors um, being downed and then the killer possibly um, getting, you know, the Mori finisher. Now, the big, big question is, who does this benefit? What kind of player, what kind of killer, what kind of uh, perks 
benefit this. And this is a little bit tricky and there is a lot to explore. I hope that we all together in the PTV try to break the system to make it the best it can possibly be. Uh, one nice thing that I can say about the system is that solo players now have it a little bit easier. You no longer have to worry about your teammate having Unbreakable or not. If your teammate goes down and they're left on the ground for 45 seconds, they're most likely going to be pick them, picking themselves up soon. You don't need to worry about them bleeding out. And that's kind of nice. Honestly, that, that's, that's nice. Uh, knowing that it takes a little while, but they will pick themselves up and you don't need to worry about, you know, someone bleeding out in the, in the match, in the match uh, for four minutes. Uh, another thing that's very, very obvious is that the top tier killers, many of which are currently capable of downing multiple survivors quick, quick, quick in a quick succession, are now very oppressive. If you play against a strong nurse and there's only three survivors left, she is only one quick play away, maybe one lucky noid, one lucky whatever, one lucky play away from completely destroying your team and winning on the spot. If three of you are down and you're crawling to the exit gates and the fourth survivor goes down, it doesn't matter that the exit gates are open, you will die on the spot. So that is a little bit scary and anything that makes the already very strong killers stronger is maybe potentially problematic. Um, another thing that I personally uh, don't like is how the new Unbreakable is absolutely insane and does put killers in lose-lose situations. If you know that your survivor friends, you're playing on a, uh, as part of a group, if you know that everyone has Unbreakable, you can make really bold and insane plays. You can have one injured dude go for a rescue. They can trigger Reassurance, which will pause the timer for, um, for 30 seconds, and then simply try to unhook. If the killer interrupts that and downs them, now the killer has to stay there. Because in 22 seconds, the guy from the ground will pick himself up and try to rescue again. And during those 22 seconds, the guy on the hook is not dying because of reassurance. So the 22 second self pickup with only one perk forever, unlimited times, it makes playing certain killers very, very difficult. I think they should reconsider the unbreakable speed. Uh, another nice thing, maybe my favorite thing that comes from all of this is that you will now have very tense moments with snowball type killers or snowball type perks. If you play against the Plague or Trapper or Myers or Oni and there's a person or two on the hook, the last two survivors need to be very careful because suddenly if one of them goes down, the other one is the last person standing. If they go down quickly as well, even if the other people have Unbreakable or they were about to use their Deliverance, whatever, they can now die on the spot as well. So I do like that there's a bit of tension with some of these killers that can now have big, big comebacks regardless of what perks could be in play. Uh, the things that are not so nice, though, are some of the killers that have to slug for things that are beyond their control. If you play the Twins, you know very well that it takes sometimes 10 or 15 seconds to simply get a pickup after using your power. Uh, so some of these changes seem very, very inappropriate for killers like this and situations like this. If, what if they are saboing? There will be times where you leave people on the ground, not because you want to, but because you have to. And these changes could be very, very annoying, especially with the unbreakable speed. I do hope, though, that since this is a feature that is coming in the future, some of these things are addressed. We are all hoping for some twins reworks and the like. So hopefully this is something that is not such a big deal by the time this feature comes live. Uh, another thing that's worth mentioning that someone pointed out that I didn't think of immediately is what happens if there are new places where the killer cannot hook. Eventually, survivors will find places in new maps or reworked maps or after new updates, they'll find places where if they go down, you can no longer ever um, hook them. And when they do that and you have uh, Unbreakable and, and other perks to pick yourself up fast, the killer will be in a lose-lose situation where some survivors are literally unkillable and they'll be able to pick themselves up several, several times before they bleed out. So... These exploit like think of uh, like old RPD with the top um, floor of the library and so on. Situations like this could become extremely anno annoying if they ever come up. And another thing that's kind of worth mentioning: if everyone being on the ground means that the game ends, that also means that cheaters might have a new way to completely end the game at the very start. Uh, which, you know, might be a problem, but, you know, what can there be in DVD right now that is not affected by, by cheats? Uh, maybe that's a better question than that. Either way, um, what are your thoughts about this? Can you think of even more downsides 
or, or more balanced things that need to be addressed should the nurse no longer have basic attacks and insta down with perks by the time this happens uh, should they rework bigger maps to have more um hooks what are your thoughts what do you think needs to change by the time this happens personally i'm excited i think this could be positive for the game it would be maybe a good time to consider giving killers more incentive to hook different survivors and do it quickly. It wouldn't be the craziest thing if we bumped up the carrying speed from 92% to 96% and then according, you know, uh, adjust perks like agitation accordingly. It might be time for other nice changes to accommodate this big change and that could actually make the game better and a little bit more fun. Uh, I, I certainly know that I don't love being slow for four minutes and I also feel like you know, if the whole unbreakable thing gets patched, the 45 seconds seems pretty reasonable. Ideally, ideally, with no exploits and no crazy uh, situations, you shouldn't be slugging two hours for more than 45 seconds. Uh, but that's my thoughts. Uh, tell me yours. I'll be sure to read them. Thank you so much. And I'll see you in the next one.